Genesis, the very beginning. Uh, we're in chapter 43. We're going to pick it up here in a moment with verse 22. Joseph um, has elevated, um, has been elevated by God. He's the top man under Pharaoh in Egypt. And because of the famine, he stored corn, enough for not only Egypt, but all the nations surrounding. And Pharaoh elevated him to this position. Now his brothers who wanted to kill him and actually sold him into slavery, um, they've come down uh, from Canaan and they, they want to buy some corn, they did. And uh, Joseph had them put their money back in their sack on the way home. And when they opened the sack and saw it, they thought, man, we're going to be accused of stealing. But anyway, they went on back and they were supposed to bring little Benjamin, who was Joseph's true brother, full blood brother. The others were only half brothers. And um, as it would be, uh, Jacob, the father of all 12, said, I, it would kill me if something happened to Benjamin because Joseph is dead. He's gone, and if I lost him, my only son now from Rachel, I'd, I'd die. So they finally, it, they became so um, um, in bad shape because of the drought that finally they said, well, we're going to die anyway. Go ahead and take him, and Judah stood good for him. So here they are. They go back, and Joseph is giving them lunch in his own home. Now, this is frightening them a little bit because that's so unusual. They're wondering what's going on. So they talked to the steward, and they were alibying about how they didn't steal. They had the money, and they brought it back with them, and they're trying to evaluate what's happening here. So chapter 43, verse 22, let's go with it. And other money have we brought down in our hands to buy food besides what we took back the first time. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. We don't know who did that. Verse 23. And he said, this is the steward of Joseph's house. Peace be to you. Fear not your God and the God of your father hath given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money and he brought Simeon out unto them. So uh, there's more truth in that if you look to the depth of it. He's, uh, our God had saved Egypt, and not only Egypt, but all the people around. He is the Savior. And, and here we have Joseph, which is a type of the Savior, but certainly Almighty God. He's handling things real well. Do you realize he still does to this day? If you keep attuned to what God is teaching and what he would have you know for the moment, everything's in good shape. Father's still on the throne. Everything's cruising along. So they're, they're at this very rich man's house. And they're kind of wondering, what are we doing here? What are they going to do to us? Are they going to kill us? Verse 24. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house. And gave them water, and they washed, and they washed their feet, and he gave them asses, their asses provender, fed their their mules for them, and uh, you know in that country wearing sandals, your feet will always get filthy, so they could wash their feet, be clean, twenty five, and they made ready the present against Joseph, came at noon, for they heard that. They should eat bread there. They were, they were going to have food there. I'm, and this is what's throwing them a little bit. Why would they feed us here? And they, but as, as Jacob had told them, you get to, and you know, in a drought ridden land, the present they brought would have been awesome to gather together because of scarcity. 26. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed themselves to him to the earth. And here, this is what caused them to get ticked at him to start out with. He had this dream that they all bowed to him and paid obeyance. And it made them so jealous that uh, they, they couldn't stand him. And that's why they sold him, and some of them wanted to kill him. 27, and he asked them of their welfare, and he said, Is your father well? The old man of whom you spake, is he yet alive? And Joseph loved his dad. He really loved his father. He did. 
And his father loved him. That's why he had that coat of many colors, 28. And they answered, Thy servant, our father, is in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeyance. Again, bowing to him. Twice in the dream, remember? Back, way back that uh, they, they did this. 29. And he lifted up his eyes and he saw his brother Benjamin. This is his own full blood brother. His mother's son. And he said, Is this your younger brother? Of whom you spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. Talking to Benjamin. 30. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother. From inside he was dying. Okay. And he sought where to weep. Uh, with joy, of course, and seeing his own full blood brother. And he entered into his chamber and wept there. And, and so it was. 31. And he washed his face. And he went out and refrained himself. That self-control is what that word means in the Hebrew. And he said, set on bread. Let's feed them. And as he practices his self-control. But there he is with his other 11 brothers, which would be the heads of the tribes of Israel. And the house of Israel and the house of Judah. All, all here at one place. 32. And they set on for him by himself. And for them by themselves, and for the Egyptians which did eat with him by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. It, it's not permitted. So there they separate them, but they still feed them right there. And I'm sure that, you know, naturally uh, the Hebrews... These children of Israel are wondering, we're not at the same table, we're over here by ourselves, what are they going to do to us? Verse 33, And they set before him the firstborn, according to his birthright, Reuben, okay, and the youngest, according to his youth, Benjamin, and the men marvel one at another. Why? How would this man know the ages of these children, these people? How, how could he possibly know? Well, he should. He was their own brother. But it's one of those little things that caused them to really marvel. 34. And he took and he sent messages unto them from before him. Uh, but Benjamin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs. And they drank and were merry with him. They, they lived it up pretty good, and they supped pretty good, and they drank pretty good. But I want you to see what Joseph is doing. He's being partial to Benjamin to see if his own brothers will sell him or be jealous of him as they were of Joseph. He's, he's checking his brothers out here. He wants to know if, if they would sell um, a little old Benjamin uh, like they had him. He, he wants to check, check them out and see what kind of characters they really are. Chapter 44, verse 1. And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sack with food as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth. You put all that money right back in there again. Verse 2, and put my cup, uh-oh, put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, that'd be Benjamin, and his corn money, and he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. Now this is, uh, uh, naturally, Joseph was going to accuse them of stealing his silver cup. While he had entertained them and fed them, and to see if they'll condemn Benjamin, because they put it in his bag. He would be the thief. Only he wasn't, of course. But the whole idea is, so Joseph, can, he's checking them out. Will they sell Benjamin like they sold me? Verse 3. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their asses, on the road again. For, and when they were gone out of the city, and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, 
follow after the men, and when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have you rewarded evil for good? Why did you steal from me? Verse 5. Is not this it in which my Lord drinketh? And whereby indeed he divineth? That's kind of in jest, okay? Ye have done evil in so doing. And uh, because he didn't divine from that cup. But in as much as he could tell their ages and so forth, and knew exactly where that silver cup was, it might make them wonder. Verse 6. And he overtook them, and he spake unto them these same words. Verse 7. And they said unto him, Wherefore saith my Lord these words? Question. God forbid that thy servant should do according to this thing. We wouldn't steal anything. Verse 8. Behold, the money which we found in our sacks' mouths we brought again unto thee out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal out of thy Lord's house silver or gold? Why would we do that? We brought back the money. Verse 9, with whomsoever of thy servants it be found, both let him die, and we also will be my Lord's bondmen. Whoa, they just sentenced little Benjamin to death. Okay. Because that cup is in Benjamin's sack. Benjamin didn't take it. But what Joseph wants to know, once they see that Benjamin has it, Will they sell him down the tube? Verse 10. And he said, Now also let it be according unto your words. He with whom it is found shall be my servant, and you shall be blameless. I'll, I'll look, and I'll, when I find that cup, I keep him. All the rest of you can go. You're free. Verse 11. Then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground and opened every man his sack. And here you go, verse 12. And he searched and began at the eldest and left at the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. There it was. Now we'll know. Will they sell him and leave, or will they what? Verse 13. Then they rent their clothes and laid it every man his ass and returned to the city. They didn't, hint, none of them left. They all stayed. 14, and Judah, this one that would be the king line ultimately. Chapter 49 will declare that when we get there. And his brethren came to Joseph's house, for he was yet there, and they fell before him on the ground. I mean, they, they are one troubled bunch of dudes. All right. Verse 15, and Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? What ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine? Would you not know that I know who did this? And 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 again, he's pulling their leg a little bit, okay? But that, that's all right. Maybe he's got a little bit coming, all right? Because of what they did to him, 16. And Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? What can we say? What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear ourselves? God have found out the iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. Uh, it's, um, what is Judah saying, the Lord has found us out. We sold our little brother into slavery. This is our punishment for it. Talking about Joseph. But they do not know that this is Joseph standing before them. 17. And he said, and Judah continues, and he said, God forbid that I should do so, but the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant, and as for you, get ye up in peace unto your father. That was Joseph saying that to Judah and the rest of them. Leave Benjamin here and go. This is his question. This is what he, he's giving them a chance to sell little old Benjamin out. Will they? Verse 18. And then Judah came near unto him, and he said, O my Lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ears. And let not thine anger burn against thy servant, for thou art even as Pharaoh. You're, you're right up there next to him, and, 
and um, I, I know that you have authority. You can do whatever you so choose. Verse 19. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have ye a father or a brother? 20. And we said unto my Lord, We have a father, an old man and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead. And he alone is left of his mother, and his father loveth him. 21. And thou saidest unto thy servants, Bring him down unto me, that I may set mine eyes upon him. I want to see him. Verse 22. And we said unto my Lord, The lad cannot leave his father. For if he should leave his father, his father should, would die. It would kill him. Verse 23. And thou saidest unto thy servants, Except your youngest brother come down with you, you shall see my face no more. You're not going to see my face in peace. It's going to be trouble. Big trouble. That's what, that's what the saying means. 24. And it came to pass when we came up unto thy servant, uh, when we came up to thy servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. We, we passed that on. 25. And, and our father said, go again and buy us a little food. This, this is being laid out just like it happened, if you remember in the last lecture, 26. And we said, we cannot go down. If our youngest brother be with us, then will we go down, for we may not see the man's face except our youngest brother be with us. There's no way he's going to give us an audience. No way he's going to talk to us unless Benjamin is with us. Verse 27. And thy father, thy, and thy servant, my father, said unto us, you know, that my, you know that my wife bare me two sons. This would be Rachel. Of course, he had, he had all 12 sons. But through this one woman, Rachel, he only had two. That'd be Joseph and that'd be Benjamin. 28. And the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces, and I saw, and, and I saw him not since. Just he, he's gone. Verse 29. And if you take this also from me, this youngest, and mischief befall him, you shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. It'll kill me. I, I couldn't bear that. I've lost one. I couldn't lo lose the other. Verse 30, now, therefore, when I came to thy servant, my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's uh, uh, life, 31, it shall come to pass when he seeth that the lad is not with us, that he will die. And thy servant shall bring down the gray hair of thy servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. It, it will kill him if we don't take Benjamin back with us. Judah's going to forfeit himself in the place of Benjamin, and this proves to Joseph that they would not sell Benjamin into slavery the way they had him. That's what he wants to know. Verse 32, And thy servant became surety for the lad unto my father, Judah saying, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame of, to my father forever. He, he can, that's it. 33. Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brethren. Let him go free. Now this proves to Joseph what he wanted to know that they're going to protect his brother like they should have protected him. Only Joseph is wise enough to know it wasn't really his brothers that did this, but that it was the plan of God to bring salvation to the family through Joseph's taking over in Egypt, but not only bringing salvation to his family, but to all the nations around just as Christ is the Savior to all the world of whomsoever will believe upon him. 
This was a type of that Savior. Only through our through our the Lord Jesus Christ, He saves souls, and Joseph is saving lives by substance. Verse thirty-four to continue. For how shall I go up to my father, and the lad be not with me? Lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father. I, I just I can't bear that. And again, Joseph knowing, verse 45, And then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him and cried, Cause every man, cause every man to go out from me. He shoot him away. These are the Egyptians. Get the Egyptians away from here. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. In other words, now he knew and he did not want the Egyptians present. Why? He wasn't going to accuse his brothers in front of them. That's the type of person Joseph was. Verse 2. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. I mean, it was so loud they could hear it all over the place. Verse 3. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. They were shocked. I mean, absolutely in shock. I mean, here's their brother in this position. And they thought they had sold him or he was dead, gone. Verse 4, And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me. I pray you, and they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Verse 5. Now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. It was God's plan. This shows you the type of person that Joseph was. He could have come down on his brothers pretty hard. Some of them wanted to kill him. But he knew that it was God who had brought this to pass, even from the visions that he gave Joseph of the rest of the family paying obe obedience to him, bowing to him when he was uh, the youngest of all the rest of the brothers. And, um, and they, they hated him for that. They really did. But he's not blaming them. He's saying it was God's plan all along. How, how do you handle your life like that? If you're one of God's elect, don't you know that God's on the throne? That God's in control. You can trust him. What you have to do is listen to him. And listen carefully. For God will always forewarn us of what's about to happen. Why? Well, it's written. I have foretold you all things. The question, have you read it? Have you studied it? And so it is. I believe that with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. That God's on the throne and everything happens as he would have it happen. Or as, the, as man allows it. Man allows too much junk when God gave us rules to not allow it. When you allow junk, you're going to get junk. When you stop junk, you stop junk. It's up to the people. So uh, this shows you again what kind of man Joseph is. I mean, he could have romped and rolled and told them about what a great guy he was and how he had taken over Egypt. He was a man of power, had it all going his way, and they were a bunch of turkeys because they had sold him into bondage. He didn't do that because that wasn't Joseph. He knew God was on the throne and that God had brought this to pass. Don't grieve yourself, he's saying. Verse 6 to continue. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years. There's five more to go. In the which there shall neither be earing nor harvest. Earing is an old Anglo-Saxon word meaning plowing. Not going to be any plowing or any harvest. It's dry. <clears throat> so we got five more years to go through this. Seven. And God sent me before you 
to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Again, I want you to take note. Is Joseph taking credit for this? No, he isn't. He's saying, God sent me. Okay. Giving all the credit to our Heavenly Father. And you, and you, that's a good thing to take from and to remember. When God gives you a truth and a blessing, give God the credit for it. Won't you do that? Verse 8. So now, it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and Lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, um, here we have an, an English, I'm sorry, an Egyptian saying translated from uh, using Hebrew to translate it, and that won't fly. What, what he said is instead of a father to Pharaoh, it's ab in Pharaoh, which is this, it's an Egyptian word meaning I'm the head officer of, of under Pharaoh. That's what it means in the Egyptian tongue. Okay, verse nine. Haste ye, and go up to my father, and say unto him, Thus saith thy son Joseph, God hath made me Lord of all Egypt, come down unto me, tarry not. Now, again, another little look at Joseph here. Listen carefully. Verse 10. And thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, Thou and the children, thy children, and thy children's children, and thy flocks, and thy herds, and all that thou hast. Now, it's important that you know Goshen is in southern Egypt. That's the land of the shepherd kings. They'll be at home there. They can raise sheep. They'll be in good shape. Okay. And uh, so he's looking out for his own. He's not putting them in northern Egypt. But down in the southern Egypt, where you have the Hyksos, or you have this, the shepherd kings, and, and that's where he placed them. Verse 11, And there will I nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty. You're going to perish. Now, I want you to see how sure of himself Joseph is. He didn't say, maybe we're going to have five more years. He was absolute. How could he be absolute? Because God told him. And you can believe God. He knew there wouldn't be three, there wouldn't be four, there are going to be five more years of it. No ifs, no ends, no maybes. Do not question God. Verse 12, And behold, your eyes see in the eyes of my brother Benjamin that it is my mouth that um, speaketh unto you. Th this is a little hard to translate. And what, what, what it's saying, you go to my dad and don't tell him I'm the, I, I will paraphrase a little bit, don't tell him I'm the high, that from my mouth you heard me say I'm the high muckety duck of all Egypt that I really cut it big, I'm cutting a wide swath, and uh, I, I'm, I really, I'm, I'm somebody. And what he's saying, I, don't tell him from my mouth, tell him from your eyes what you have seen. Let him hear the truth from what your eyes have seen. Don't tell him I said it from my mouth or anything, that he might think I'm just blowing hot air, in other words, okay? But again, there you see little old Joseph, not wanting to take credit for anything. Not wanting, you know, here, 17 years old, sold into bondage. Comes to Potiphar. Potiphar's wife trying to seduce him. And he restrains from that and is thrown into prison because of her accusations. And then in solving riddles, with God's help, becomes under Pharaoh and bring salvation to the whole area. God arranged it. But here, this little one, he said, I, I don't want you to go to my father and say from my mouth, I said, I'm head man here, and you, you come on, I'll take care of you. I've got it made. Okay? 
you just report what you see with your eyes to my father. Verse 13, and you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and of all that you have seen, not from my mouth, but what you have observed, the actual facts. And you shall haste and bring down my father hither. I want to see him. That's what Joseph is saying. Joseph really loved his father. So here, these 11 are really shocked because of what they had done and knew God was punishing them, them and then to find out that God is still on the throne and that as he has chosen these to head nations, tribes, that um, Father on that throne is still in control and everything is well. Verse 14, and he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and he wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. They, you know, that's a reunion from, from a long time when one thought the other was dead and the other didn't know. 15, moreover, he kissed all his brethren. He loved them all and wept upon them. And after that, his brethren talked with him. What, what, what a family reunion with God. I mean, this, he, you know, he had every right to come down on them. But he didn't. He said, God has arranged this. Our Heavenly Father is in control. And everything's going to be well. I'm in a position, as you have seen, to take care of my father. 